What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at Insurance Auto Auctions for another IA walk around. Let's jump into this with number one on my list. A 2013 Cadillac Escalade. I'm not entirely sure why I'm looking at this one. I can already tell it's, it's a little on the rough side. She's probably got some miles on her too. But I thought, you know, for a work vehicle, something cheap that someone could use, this could be decent. Assuming the other side's not destroyed and I haven't seen it yet. Look at these tires. Who put these on here, man? These are BF Goodrich All-Terrain TAs. These are some pretty aggressive tires for an Escalade, man. And we got a, a Wrangler up front. Again, with the aggressive tread. Hey, maybe this person lived down a bad road, you know, a really nasty dirt gravel road, and they wanted tires. It was going to make sure they didn't get stuck. I don't see anything wrong with this one other than it's, it's a little on the rough side Ooh, oh wow is that a blown tire totaled i guess so she must have some miles i mean she's a little rough on the outside but not that bad so this piece of plastic came off here it's not a big deal they just clip on they obviously got some glue get another one you got your fender flare over there that came apart it also dented this bumper Again, work truck, who cares? Down here, what kind of damage did we cause? Ooh. I mean, she scraped some things up. Honestly, though, the suspension looks all right. I think everything under here is fine. The wheel looks like it's still usable. It's still in good shape, very shiny on the inside. Guys, I think this is fine. Unless the interior is just totally destroyed. Oh, and the, uh, the running board, I guess it damaged that too. So yeah, you got a little bit of work to do. But I mean, it's not like you got to replace the door and the quarter panel or anything. Just clean it up, man, and put your little plastic pieces back on it. Put a tire on it. Actually, put a set. Please, put a set of tires on it and call it a day. Clean those headlights. This could be decent. I, I Maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit because I have not seen the interior. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's old. It's a little rough. All right. But it's really not that bad. Headliners get, look, you got double vision. Look at that, you got dual screens, man. How nice is that? This is a nice Escalade. Uh, I'm sure the front seats are destroyed. They always are. Yeah, yeah, the seats are bad. The seats are really bad. You could find these at a junkyard though, right? Or maybe just have them recovered. I don't know. I'm probably trying to find some lower mileage front seats and throw them on here. It's not the worst. Dashboard is a little cracked. Windshields cracked. I'm starting to see. <laughs> starting to see why now. Yeah. Yeah. She she's rough. She got a Kenwood deck, probably DVD player. Look look at this clock. Wow. That's a nice looking clock. Does it have keys? Yes, it does. Oh, I thought for a minute we didn't have a key. There's a key. Dead as doornail for sure. What is this? Ultra f <laughs> Oh, somebody got scammed. Ultra fuel saver. Okay. Let me take... Guys, gals, listen to me. Don't be scammed by products like this, man. This does nothing. It's got a little light. That's all. It'll flash at you. And that's about all it does. It may beep at you if you hit the throttle too hard or something, but aside from that, saving fuel is really easy, and spending money on a product that doesn't actually do anything is not a good way to save money. All right, you wanna save money on gas? I'm gonna help you out here. Number one, don't buy an Escalade. Don't buy a big Bertha gas guzzling truck. All right, get you a Honda Civic or Toyota Camry or Corolla or Nissan Maxima or a Sentra or something or Chevy Cruze, a million cars out there you can buy to save gas, all right? So uh, if you're worried about fuel economy, don't buy one of these. But if you do buy one of these and you are worried about fuel economy, I got a tip for you. Keep your foot out of the throttle as much as possible. Slow and steady wins the race. You get your best fuel economy just taking it easy. Time to see if she'll start. Wow, first try too. These GMs with side posts, man, 90% of the time. 90% of the time, I'm telling you, 
you got to redo that those battery connections over and over and over and over again so stability track no big deal there who cares about stability control right oh it wants a password for the radio there i wonder if the ac works i know it's it's cold but i, I always need to know like i might be interested in this guys so don't snipe this from me all right ac ac on there we go it's got parking sensors your traction control in case you want to do burnouts uh, is this all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive? I don't know. Brakes feel good? Oh. What happened? I went to turn the steering wheel and it died. Whoa! <laughs> what? I just turned the steering wheel and she died. Oh, there's something else going on here, right? I'm going to shut this off. It's got me a little nervous right now. So, I don't get it. Is this hydraulic power steering or electronic? Let's take a peek. It's hydraulic. We have a power steering pump right there. So, it's a hydraulic power steering system. Uh, if it was electronic, I can understand maybe the battery doesn't have enough juice, and maybe my old booster pack here doesn't have enough juice to get the wheel turned. But I noticed this. When I was turning it towards the driver's side, it stayed running. The minute I turned it towards the passenger side, the whole thing died. I mean, this thing just shut right off. Someone explain that to me. Both front wheels are straight. Dang it. I, I actually like this one. I really like this one. I was considering putting it on my list, but now I'm... Look, even my booster pack shut off, and that is that is highly unusual. This thing should stay on until I come out here and disconnect it and turn it off, and it shut itself down. So something must have been overloading the charging system. That's the only thing I can think of. Or drawing too much. I don't know. If you guys have any clue what could have just caused that, please let me know. Unfortunately... I'm a little turned off by this one at this point, so I'm going to walk away. Next on my list is one for Monkey Wrench Mike. What is it? like? A, it's an SEL something. 560, 580, 380 SL. There you go. I don't know anything about these guys. This is, this is rough. This thing is very rough all the way around. Anyway, this is not the next car on the list. I was just kidding. It happens to be sitting right next to the next car on my list that I was actually bidding on last week and I didn't win it. They wanted $8,000 for this. This is, what year is this? I can't remember. 2011, it's 740. 2011, I think it's a 740. Let's take a look around it. Cause I have not come out here to even look at it yet. Uh, and there's just no way. There's no way I'm paying $8,000 or something like this. It's a 750. It's an LI, extended wheelbase. You got a, that might be a real carbon fiber lip. But then when you see the, the gas tank wrapped in carbon, fake carbon, yeah, you might, yeah, it might be fake as well. So I notice this wheel is tucked up into the fender pretty good there. I also notice it's got some wild aftermarket wheels that I personally don't care for. Fake carbon fiber wrap over that as well. It does not say if it runs and drives. So I have no idea. Fake carbon fiber on the grill that is pitted and peeling. Oh boy, this is this is something. There's your twin Turbski V8 under the hood. Isn't this a 4.4? Oh hell, this isn't even the car's original color. The car's been painted and not well. It used to be like silver or beige. You guys tell me. I don't know what color that is. It's not white. Usually BMWs will tell you like somewhere. They got a little plaque that tells you what color they are. I don't see it though, so I don't know. Um, well, I got a bad feeling about this. One. I haven't even looked at it yet, and I just I got a I got a bad feeling about this. The headlights coming apart. Those are some gnarly wheels. 245, 35, ZR20s. Quite a bit of rust buildup on the rotor, which tells me it's probably been sitting a while. Here's another thing that concerns me. Got this number 12.5 of 22. N-O-K-O-C-P-D. 
All right, I don't know what LW8 means, but this is Oklahoma City Police Department. All right, NOK is probably no key. And this is probably like the police report number, file number, and obviously the date it was brought in. It's listed as a total loss. I'm just not seeing anything other than, I mean, maybe they told it from the wheels and the paint. Maybe that's in this fake wrap. <laughs> I don't know, to me, that totals it. Like, it's enough to make me not even really want this car, but there's something going on that passenger side suspension. Let's take a look at the interior, see how bad it is. This is a big back seat, guys. Take a look at this look at the room in here and again this is what i'm talking about the seats you see what i'm saying you're leaning back you, the front seat is behind the pillar so that your torso let me show you look at this look how far back the seat is sitting so your torso is literally behind it's got to be protection from from gunfire it has to be that's the only thing that makes sense because leaning back like this, I couldn't drive like this, man. This is awkward. It doesn't it doesn't feel right. Lean back. Lean back. I don't like it. I don't like the way this feels at all. Does it have Oh, there's no keys to this one, which is why it's listed as a non-runner. I was hoping maybe somebody had, you know, insurance company recovered it, maybe it was a theft. Maybe they got the car back and perhaps the keys would be with it this time. You always got to look, though. It doesn't hurt to poke around, look for the keys. I don't see any keys in here <laughs> at all. No, there's no keys. Well, that sucks. Hidden in there. There's some money. There is some money. Looks like it's got adaptive cruise control and everything, too. That's, that's pretty impressive. It's got your night vision mode, your adaptive cruise, lane departure, collision avoidance, and lane keep assist. Wow. Really? In a 2011? I'll, I'll give it to these European car manufacturers, man. Uh, what? They know how to stuff technology in these things. That's for damn sure. Well, I was not aware that it had no key. It probably says it in the listing. But this is a hell of a risk, man. See, on the sticker here, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you anything. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to walk away from this one, guys. $8,000 with no key. I can't do it. They now changed the buy it now to three grand, though, if I remember correctly. It's sitting at three. And that is very tempting. But still, I'm just going to have to walk away. Next on my list, the 2017 Ford F-150. 133,000 miles on the odometer, and I can't help but wonder, why is this thing here? I like it. I do. I like it, man. These stripes are cool as hell, I think. I mean, it's going to be one of those things, you love them or you hate them. I like the wheels. Lux HD. They're riding on Firestone Destination MT2s, and the size is 33 by 12 and a half by 20. So, very nicely spec tires i think they're not too big they're not too crazy they look really good stx four by four why is she here couldn't tell you man i really couldn't somebody put some some glue under this cap to hold it down so that's that's something um it doesn't look wrecked at all i don't see any damage anywhere good tires all the way around nice factory running boards has it been on fire or something? No. Oh, it actually smells good in here. That's that's a welcome change, guys. Smells nice. Interior looks very clean. This is one that somebody somebody took care of. I want to be sure I don't hit anything. Look at that. What a nice interior this is. She's got power too. You can jump right in this thing. Does it have a key? It does have a key. Okay. Let's try it out. Let's see what it does. It runs perfect. I mean, it runs perfect. Airbag light, though. Okay. Hood ajar. It's an Eco Beast, Eco Boost. Gauges look good. Good oil pressure. It's got half a tank of fuel. 
Important window. Works. That one works as well. What do you think, guys? This is nice. This is really nice. It's got an aftermarket Pioneer radio. I, I like this. I, I like this a lot. It's got some cigarette burns in the seats. You know, it was obviously used. We got your trailer backup right here. Of course, there's no trailer connected. You got your two and four. Let's put in four high, four by four shift in progress. It made it into four high, back to two. And back to two, not a problem. Why would this be here? Air conditioning? Let's see. Here we go. Oh, wow, that was quick. <laughs> Very cold air conditioning. We could turn that off. We don't need we don't need AC today. Got your little 12 volt power outlet there. Oh, you got the original window sticker. No kidding. The original sticker. I love when you find these things, man, because it tells you how much they cost when they were new. This was obviously not a cheap truck. Let's see. Let's unfold this. How nice to have the window sticker with it, right? All right. Price information, blah, blah, blah. 46 46 485 but there were some discounts, so it came out to 44 485 Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, it's the 2.7 EcoBoost. Ew. Ah. E. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize this is the 27. All right, I thought it was the 35. That changes my opinion a little bit. I'll go ahead and shut her down. She she obviously runs well. Uh, I could put it into gear and all that stuff, but I don't think there's really any need to on this one. As soon as I saw 2.7, I was like, I'm out. I'm out. It's I don't mind an EcoBoost at all. I really don't. These are great engines, man, uh, and powerful. They'll get the job done, but a 2.7, that's far too small, guys. Far too small. I prefer the 3.5. I think it's a 3.5 anyway. The bigger one. That's the one I like. There it is. There it was. And there it goes. And last one on my list today, it is the thumbnail. A 1990 Honda Civic DX. She's a bare bones, pretty rough car. But I'm going to tell you right now, honest God, you can look it up for yourself because this car is currently for sale. $250. No joke. This is a buy it now for $250. Now the car doesn't have a straight panel on it. There's not a panel that's consistently painted. The roof is dented up. She's lived a rough life, but I'll tell you something about this car, guys. It comes with something very, very special. I'm gonna show you that right now. Bingo. It's got a fart can muffler. That's right. Busted lights everywhere. We have, let's tell you a little more about who owned it, right? Relief Clinic. And, you know, I'm not even gonna get into that. None of my business. Let's move along. Obviously, it's got the wrong wheels on it. Oh, we found a little bit of, a little bit of cancer on her there too. She's a, she's a rough car, guys. She's a very rough car. It says it doesn't run, and it says that it's, engine damage and you know me i'm just oh ooh. <laughs> inch oh wait a minute <laughs> hold on a minute I, I i hate to say that i'm intrigued but you guys know how much i love my crap box cars that is a brand new head gasket most likely for this very car yeah all right head gasket and while they were at it, somebody bought a factory correct Honda timing belt. I mean, it even says, let's see if I can get you in there. It even says Honda right on it, man. I'm assuming she's got a blown head gasket. <laughs> that would make sense to me. The timing belt that's on it looks good. It should really have a cover on it, but you got a new intake manifold gasket right there as well. I'm guessing no compression, maybe water in the oil. No, oil looks good. 
So I'm just going to go with no compression then, right? Probably no coolant. I don't see any coolant in there. Oh, and I can't put that hose as hard as a rock. It's a manual transmission, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I'm kind of intrigued. Somebody's been down here working with wires. They've got wire caps that are full of oil down there. I don't know if you can see those very well, but uh, spider webs and everything are included free of charge. She's a fuel injected model, so, you know, she should. F oh, it is not a manual, it's an automatic. Ah, I thought it was a manual transmission. Oh, let's. Oh, we can't put that seat back. It comes with a brand new inner tie rod as well. Boy, she is. She's a she's a rough car, guys. This thing is in very very bad shape. I don't even think I can fit in here. To be honest with you, no, I can't fit. Who was driving this? Oh my. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh man. Okay. That's nice. It does have a key though. It does. Aftermarket dual radio. You've got the weight saving glove box delete kit installed in there. That's always nice. Uh, dirt all over the floor. Speakers that are definitely working properly. <sighs> oh boy, man. Oh, this one's rough. Let's throw a jump on it. Let's see if it'll even crank. Let's see what happens. Oh, we got juice. Hazard lights are on. No? Turn signal? There we go. She's got gas. Oh. Nothing? Oh, she's trying. She's trying. Low on compression. All right. Let me pause this video. Let me give her a minute to cool off. I don't want to run that starter too hard, but I think this thing might actually fire up. I gave the starter about a five minute break. I don't want to overheat anything here. Uh oh. No! She's got a, a troublesome starter for sure. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, oh look, we've got a new valve cover gasket. Somebody had all the parts for this thing. New exhaust manifold gasket. I think it's safe to say she needs she needs a head gasket. Yeah, this car is just so rough though, like. There it is. There it is. She ran. That starter. She's touchy. All right. Well, if I get it running again, we'll come back. Well, we got her cranking again, guys. But now I'm not getting anything out of it. So I'm not going to I'm not going to keep screwing with it or getting that starter heated up. And quite honestly, it's taken far too long for me to uh, sit here and wait five minutes to cool that thing off again. And we're burning up valuable juice in our booster pack here. The point is, though, is that the car runs. Let me put all this stuff back, I guess, under here where it came from. This is where it was all sitting. Come on. There we go. You guys tell me... I need another project car like I need a hole in the head and this thing is this thing is very rough I'm not really all that interested in it but for $250 here's the problem with a cheap car guys I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you this real quick and then I, I'm gonna be over it but the problem with the cheap car help even a free car if you got this car for free and it didn't cost you anything <clears throat> how much is it gonna cost you the head, if you pull it off, you can't just throw a head gasket on call of the day. You got to send the head in to at least get checked, at least put a straight edge on it, you know, make sure it's straight. And if not, you got to send it in for work. 
Once you get the head replaced and all the components, even the free stuff that comes with it, I mean, you're going to need a water pump. Highly recommend a water pump and a timing belt, probably some hoses. Then you've got all of this stuff to contend with. Busted headlights, busted taillights, smashed fenders, the wrong size wheels and tires, a smashed roof, a destroyed interior. By the time you're done spending your own money putting this $250 car together, it's probably going to cost you $450 out the door. You could have $3,000 into this car that, quite honestly, you could have just bought a nice one for. So, in my opinion... If you just need a project, this is it right here, man. You're not going to get cheaper or better, and it did run briefly. We know it runs, and it didn't knock or anything. So there you go. It could make a good project. But if you just want something that could be a nice car, I would just save my money and buy a nicer car. And with that, we're going to get out of here. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, and thank you to IAA for letting us come out here. If you enjoy the content, hit the thumbs up button, drop your comments below, subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed, and until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.